Matthew 28, 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. May God bless his word and you may be seated. Entitled the message, The Amazing Easter Eggs. Well, the first Easter dawned upon us 2,000 years ago. In that garden where the tomb of Jesus was. The world was troubled then. Jews were under the heel of Rome. Five million people were slaves. Rulers were dictators. Infant mortality was very high. Few lived to the age of six years old. Plagues or diseases swept the population. Taxation was a great burden. Individuals then were troubled. We read in our Bible lessons about the resurrection and the, the uh, suffering of Jesus dying at the cross. His friends suffered. The women wept as they prepared the spices on that Saturday, the day after Passover. Two men were sorrowful on their way to Emmaus as they didn't know what happened because Jesus had died and was buried. The eleven disciples were very confused, disillusioned, frightened. Well, Easter is dawn today, April 16, 2017. The world is still troubled. The stage set for the Middle East is a powder keg ready to explode. Syria is in terrible turmoil. ISIS got hit in Afghanistan. North Korea flexing their military missiles. Our country is troubled. Murder rates soar. Highways, the accidents and deaths caused by the drunk, the drugged, and the impaired. Families are troubled. Divorce and drugs and depression. Anger and abuse. Sorrow, sickness, and sadness. Well, many of you are asking, well, what can we do? Where can we go? Preacher, you're making me sad on this resurrection day. I got good news for you. There's one who lived a sinless life, died a cruel death at the cross, shed precious blood on what we call Good Friday, he was buried. But the story doesn't end there, thank God. We have good news. Yes, we may say the best news or the greatest news of all history. Jesus Christ, Son of God, arose a third day. Amen? He came forth in a bodily resurrection. And I'll repeat that word. You'll hear it today. Bodily resurrection he is risen as he said 
The grave could not keep its prey. Jesus is alive. And because Jesus lives, you can find out some great news, wonderful news, that will help us in this troubled world. Now, the amazing Easter eggs. Well, let's see what we got here. We're going to let the first egg be a pink egg. Doesn't matter what color it is, really. But this is a pink egg. Now, that represents number one, the promise. Don't forget the word promise of Jesus' glorious resurrection. We didn't read the Matthew 27, 62 and following, but there we find that the Jewish religious crowd, the leaders of the Jews, they'd heard about Jesus saying, after three days, I'll rise again. Did they believe it? Well, maybe, maybe not. They didn't know about this Jesus. Matthew 20, 19 said, I will be delivered to the Gentiles, mocked and scourged and crucified and the third day rise again. He said it again in Matthew 17, 23, Matthew 16 and 21, and here in Matthew 28, 6, he is risen by the angel said, as he said. Who said it? Jesus said it. Did Jesus make promises? Yes. And every promise has proven true. Don't count out Jesus. He's the real deal. He's a man of his word, or we could say most importantly, he's God of his word. What he promises, he fulfills. Don't you like pre people who fulfill their promises? Well, this preacher, he fulfilled his promise one Sunday. He stood up to preach his message. He's behind this old pulpit. And he said, I'm coming to you. I mean, I got a message and I'm coming to you. Well, he pounded his fist on that old pulpit. He leaned forward again. Once again, he shouted, Lord, I'm coming to you. And about that time, the pulpit and himself fell flat in front of the first pew of members. And as he awakened for a moment, he looked up and they said, you said you were coming and you promised and you fulfilled it. On this Easter day, many are making promises. Many are breaking them. You don't have to go to Washington, D.C. You don't have to go to the court rooms of states. You can go to your workplace, people breaking the promises. You can go to your home, people breaking the promises. And you can go to even some churches, and they're breaking the promises. You see, the religious leaders of Jesus' day, uh, they called him a deceiver, an imposter. Uh, they didn't believe Jesus. They thought he was a fake, just a wonderful young teacher walking around. But he stood before them and they heard it and they saw him. He revealed that he was the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the what? Life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So on this first amazing egg, we're going to focus on the promise of the resurrection. Jesus said it, you can believe it. He arose again. And what else did Jesus promise? He promised salvation, John chapter 3. He promised forgiveness, Matthew 26, 28. He promised peace, John 14 and 27, and Romans 5 and Ephesians 2. He promised hope and he promised a future heaven, John 14. But I got news for you, friends. Unless the Spirit of God breaks your heart and causes you to seek after Him, you will not come to Him. Are you listening? He said in the Word of God, 
Jeremiah, who's I think the first to quote it, if you seek me, you shall find me. If you search for me with all your heart, have you sought Jesus? He is the resurrection. Uh, secondly, today, we're going to go to a, a yellow egg. This is an amazing egg. Well, what is it going to stand for? We're going to let it stand for the amazing power of the resurrection. You got that? The amazing power of the resurrection. You don't miss the word power. If you miss any other word, don't miss that word. The power of the resurrection. Look at Matthew 28, verses 2 and 3. What did Jesus say here? Or what did the Bible say? And behold, there, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Now, you see the power of God here on that first Easter morning? He did something very powerful. In that garden where Jesus lay in that rock-sealed tomb, God shook the earth. There was a whole lot of shaking going on. And it sure wasn't Elvis either. Let me ask you, lift your hands just quickly. Who has experienced a real earthquake? You've been involved in it. Several, you see. Was it out in the West? Y'all in the West, right? Okay. Where were you? Tennessee? Okay. Now, those who have experienced a real earthquake, you've seen it on television. I don't want to be there. I have never experienced that. I may feel tremors or something in the land somewhere, but we're talking about devastation. We're talking about massive concrete brick walls come tumbling down. Uh, we're talking about many hundreds and even thousands of deaths of people. So we, we are, we're shocked. It's frightful. We don't want to be a part of something such as that. But on this resurrection day that Jesus came forth, that God shook the earth. On that day, he didn't come to bring destruction, but new construction. He did not come to bring gloom, but a new glory. He did not come to bring pity, but a new power. He did not come to bring death, but new life. That's what the Father looked down upon that day. And said to his angel, dear messenger from heaven, go down to the earth. Outside Jerusalem in that garden tomb and set my son free. And he did. Jesus, the true son of God, arose bodily. The bodily resurrection. Don't miss it. He walked out of the tomb. He who was dead and buried is alive again. No device or plan of man could stop God's plan. Man placed the stone, God sent the earthquake. Man placed a guard, God sent his angel. Man wanted a dead Christ, God wanted a living Christ. That's the almighty power of God. Don't miss the power of the resurrection. And most importantly today, the power of the resurrection comes to shake up is everybody listening? Say amen. God is ready to shake up the stones and tombs of your life. Let me give you a few. And you here today, somebody experiences one or more of these. Are you ready? The stone or tomb of unbelief. I don't have any doubt here today that there's somebody that doesn't know the risen Savior. I would say there is at least one in this place at this very moment that doesn't really know Jesus. 
You say, I've heard of Jesus. I didn't say that. Well, I believe Jesus died on a cross and arose from the dead. I didn't say that. I said, do you know him personally? As your Lord and Savior, has he changed your life? If he hasn't, then guess what? You don't know the risen Savior. Anyway, faith given by the grace of holy God awakened in Thomas. You remember they called him Doubting Thomas? Well, Thomas walked with Jesus three years. But he just doubted. He just couldn't. He was overwhelmed by the death and burial of Jesus. But Jesus stood before him that next week. said, Thomas, look in my hands. And Thomas bowed. He said, my Lord and my God. John chapter 20, verse 28. Don't miss it. My Lord, it says what? I know you as my earthly master and Lord, but also you are the divine son of God. You are God, deity, my God. You are the real deal, Jesus. And you've changed my life. You believe it? Or what about the stone or tomb of unforgiveness? You're sitting here today, some of you, you're so bitter you can't stand yourself. You're bitter at ones in your family, bitter at relatives, bitter at in-laws and outlaws. You, you are bitter at work. Some of you are carrying hatred in your heart, and I mean deep hate. And if you don't get rid of it, if the resurrected Lord Jesus doesn't help you get rid of it, Friends, you are going to be stuck and you're going to be deep, dark depression because it's going to eat you. You don't have to do that. Why did Jesus come alive again? Get you out of your trespasses and sins. Because Jesus lives, He comes to give you power to forgive. Uh, let me go through some quick things here. Just give you some thoughts. The stone or tomb of addiction. You know, I, I hate to think of this. Opioid abuse in southwest Virginia and northeast Tennessee. I, I don't know what they say it ranks, but every time you turn on the news, radio news or a local, I'm just talking about local. It's hard to imagine to me. I just can't grasp it. Thank God I'm not in it. I'm sorry for those who are in it. But that's, it's terrible. Terrible. What about addiction to sex? Lust? Pornography? Abuse? Addiction? I'm telling you, friends, the Lord Jesus came to deliver you. Free you. What about the stone of hate? The stone of greed? The stone of death? Jesus came to give you resurrection power. Believe it. Live it. So remember, what's the yellow egg stand for? Say power. Everybody say it louder. Power. power. Well, I'll get some young people cranked up. Bless God, they'll listen. And thirdly today, what's this color, young ones? Young ones, what color is that? Green. Green. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Maybe I'll just start teaching children. Sherry, you're going to have to move over, gal. You're at least... No, I'm just kidding. 
That's precious there. Green. What does it represent? Number three, the marvelous life. Life of the resurrection. Don't miss that word. Beautiful word, isn't it? Matthew 28, 5 and 6, the angel came to Mary Magdalene. And Mary said, fear not. You don't have to be afraid. Stop being afraid. The one that's crucified on Friday buried the night of the Passover. Where is he? He's not here, friends. He's up. He's gone. He's alive. Alive and well. He's filled with life. Hear about the story of the man got hit on the head, fell into a deep coma, and stayed out a long time. So the people said, oh, well, he must be dead. So they took him down to the funeral home, threw him in a coffin. He came about 2 o'clock in the morning. Everything was dim, you know, in the funeral home. They got these dim lights. I don't know if I've been to a funeral home lately, but I declare, it makes me disturbed sometimes. You walk in these rooms, everything's dim. I say, oh, no. I'm about to fall asleep. They would throw me in the coffin. Before you don't forget about it. Anyway, they thought he was dead, and it's 2 o'clock, and it's all dim. And he sat up. And he looked around. He said two things. Good grief, what's going on? And then he said, if I'm alive, why am I in the casket? And if I'm dead, why do I have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> he was alive. He just, just was out for a little while. Job 14, 14 says, if a man dies, shall he live again? Is there life after death? Well, isn't physical death the end? That's what I look. I look in caskets. I look in uh, people, car wrecks, or I go to the hospital in the bed. They're dead. Nothing else. It's over. Is there any hope? Job, Job 19.25 says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon this earth. That's the new earth. Heaven. Jesus can hold that green egg high today because he says, I am the resurrection and the what? Life. John eleven twenty five 25 and following. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Lives. He lives the glorious life. He's ready to give you today a gracious, merciful life. Oh, despairing one. You know, sometimes in this, what we call the modern world, uh, I thought about the word sin this morning. I asked Martha, I said, I can go around and somebody says, well, do you commit sin? They say, no, I don't murder and I don't hurt people and I'm good to all people. They care nothing about the word sin. But I say to you, you and I are disobedient. They say disobedient. Well, I've been disobedient to my parents and I, I disobey the commands of my employer sometime. And that's right. We all disobey. We rebel, and most importantly, and sadly, we rebel against the Word of God and the truth of who God is, especially Jesus. We fail Him. And no one can escape that. So on this resurrection day, Jesus says, I love you. I died for your disobedience, your rebellion, your sin. And I arose to prove I'm ready to forgive you and give you new life. Do you believe that? Ready to give you dedicated life. Backslidden one. And there's a lot of you here today. I hate to say that. Backslidden, that means you have slidden back. You've walked away from the Lord doing your own things many times. And I'm not saying you're lost. I didn't say that. I said, you're doing your own thing and you're putting God to the side. And you know good and well that if Jesus is your Savior, Lord, is everybody listening? Say amen. amen. 
if Jesus is your Savior and Lord, then you've got to wake up and slide back up the scale and ask Jesus to forgive you and give you a dedicated, committed life. That's what the life giver wants to give you. He's ready to pour into your life, restore you, lift you up. Then there's victorious life. You know what? There's a lot of us here today been defeated. I'm living in a defeated type of life right now for because of a special person. There's something inside of me being defeated. But I've got good news for that one. And I've got good news for you. Because some, all of us in here have been through defeats at one time or another. Circumstances surround us that want to bind us. Why did Jesus die and was buried and burst forth from that tomb? To give us life, victory, victory over defeat. You and I are not to live a defeated life. I didn't say we don't have defeats. I didn't say we don't have struggles. I did not say we don't have trials. We will. But you can win. Why? Because Jesus is alive. And he's victorious. He's a victorious Lord. Conquering Lord. And he will win the battle. Amen. Amen? Because he lives I can face tomorrow. Because he lives all fear is gone. Because I know he holds a future. And life is worth the living. Because he lives. Well, let's go to the fourth and final egg. All right, where are my kids, the young ones? What color? They're pretty blue, isn't it? Now, I love blue. Just look at my shirt. Look at my coat. Now, I love blue. Well, this fourth amazing colored egg is blue represents the witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. The witness. Now some of you, you're getting upset already. Just the mention of the word gets you stirred up. Well, I hope it does. Jesus wants us to understand something. If we are not His witness, then we have failed in the life of being a Christian. I'm going to help you. So listen carefully. Look down here at verses 7 and 8. Matthew 28. Jesus said, Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. That's what the angel said. I'm sorry. When Jesus came to talk a lot about that later as he came back to them. Go quickly and tell. Wait, what is a witness anyway? It's very simple. What you've seen, what you've heard, what you know, just go and tell it. it it's something that's personal. You, you shouldn't keep something wonderful silent, should you? The greatest news ever told the day that changed the whole world and we won't tell it? How wonderful it is to know and tell of Jesus. Eternal. His deity. The Son of God. The only begotten Son came from heaven's glory. He's one with the Father. What about His humanity? He's called the Son of Man. Came to this earth, born of the Virgin Mary, lived a sinless life, then suffered and bled and died on a cruel cross. He was buried in the borrowed tomb. But it's a witness. Your witness. My witness stops right there. Guess what? Our faith is dead, it's vain. 
is empty. If we just serve a dead Savior, what is that? Go down to all the great religions of the world. All of them are dead. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. The third day came. Jesus Christ arose. Came back to life. He who was and is and will always be alive. He's a living Savior and Lord. I found this newspaper article. It wasn't recent. It's, I think it, maybe it's in a little booklet or something about an editorial page years ago about Easter. And listen, it, it's a good thought and it's nice. But don't miss what I'm trying to say here. Listen carefully. Easter is usually a quiet occasion. Millions of Americans make a special effort to go to church on Easter Sunday. It's a wholesome kind of holiday. That's true. It gives us all an opportunity to recuperate in a small measure from the harassments of daily life. That, that's kind of true. But that's not the main emphasis of the Lord Jesus' resurrection. This powerful, living, raised Lord Jesus is the force, that power to enter the harassments of our life and change the world around us. We have become so accustomed to go to a person we mean say, hey, I want you to come down to church next Sunday. This week, I'm going to say this. I have come to say today to you, I'm going to bring the church to you. And you want to see somebody's eyes wide open? I represent the church. You represent the church. Who is the head of the church? Jesus, a living Savior. You're not going to get most of those people to come in this building. You're not. We can't even get our own to come in here. For the most part, I'm not saying getting anything against you. Thank God for you being here. But I'm saying, for, you look at the membership roles of all churches. Jesus, this great event we call Easter Resurrection Day, is not to be lived inside a building. You've got to take it outside this building. That's called the witness. Go and tell. We who are followers of the Lord Jesus are to witness. You tell forth the good news. In the past few weeks, I've asked you, has anybody this week, you don't raise your hand, please. I'm not making anybody ashamed. But you can be ashamed in your heart right now and in your mind. And I hope you will be if you haven't done one of these things. Are you ready? If you have not texted somebody in your family, relatives, uh, friends at work, uh, those who are in school, if you haven't texted one thing about the Lord Jesus' cross and resurrection, you ought to be ashamed. Wednesday night, I told the little group in our group, we have different groups here on Wednesday night. I said today, at a place of business, I spoke to that dear nurse, and I said in one small sentence, I looked at her face, it penetrated her heart. She said, I understand, I believe that. I said one statement about the glorious cross of Jesus on Friday dying, and on the third day, he arose again. You can do that. You can say it better than I. You can. And they're going to listen to you a whole lot more than they're going to listen to me. She didn't know that I was a pastor. Try it. 
track, pamphlets? Have you given one track or pamphlet out in the last month? I'm just a Christian pamphlet. Some of you have not received this. That's my fault as pastor. You didn't get these to the day. They should have been given out last Sunday. But you can still give them out. Easter is well, alive and well. By your word or deed, by your mouth or your hand. And here's a beautiful picture of witness. By your life. Is everybody listening? By the testimony of your life, have you shown somebody in the past few weeks that Jesus is alive in your life? There are two plans today. The devil and Jesus. Two different plans. Devil says you can't be a witness. Jesus says, yes, you can. You are trusting me, Christian. You are my witness. I am with you. Say, I am with you. That's what Jesus says. Every time you go out, every time you leave your home, go to workplace, you say, I am with you. Jesus, you said, I am with you. The devil says, you, you don't know how to witness. Jesus says, you can know. And you will. The devil says, oh, you're afraid. People are going to say something smart back to you. Jesus said, fear not. Just like the angel said, fear not. Don't be afraid. The devil says, well, you know Jesus died and was buried. He's still in that old dark tomb. Jesus said, I am he who lives and I conquered death, hell, and the grave. Because of Jesus' resurrection, you, you can't remain silent. Jesus is not looking for undercover FBI agents of the gospel. He's not looking for CIA Christian followers. He's looking for onward Christian soldiers. Are you going to be one? Are you going to be one? Well, get up and get out and go and tell. And do it today. I'm not called, we are not called, let me say the word we. We are not called to save but to share. You're not called to pound people over the head. You are to point to a cross, to a resurrected tomb, a resurrected Savior. You're not to deceive people. You are to help them be delivered. Remember, you're a witness whether it's good, poor, bad. See, you're a representative of Jesus. You're going to be found faithful? Brother Paul said in Philippians 3.10 that I might know Him, Jesus, the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering. The German statesman named Konrad Adenauer. I have no idea who he was or how what year he lived. All I have is this statement by him. Turn up your ears, please. The most important thing in this world is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If Jesus is alive, then there's hope for the world. If he is still in the grave, then there isn't the slightest glimmer of hope on the horizon. Are you with me? Don't miss it. In this troubled world, we have the answer. 
We celebrate and rejoice that our crucified, buried Savior is the risen Lord. I am He that liveth and was dead. I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of hell and death. Revelation 1.18 Did you know that there's a great enemy on the loose today? It marches on. Day by day, hour by hour. You know what it is, don't you? D E A T H. What does it spell? And you and I are going to meet death. Sooner than you think. Because it will come at a time least expected. But the Lord Jesus, risen from the grave, holds the key to unlocking that tomb of death. He conquered the grave. He's won the victory. Glory to God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. He has won. You see these amazing eggs of Easter? Egg of promise, power, life, and witness. Now stay with me. Very, very important. You who are an unsaved soul, have you grasped the love of God? Do you sense any sense this morning of lostness? Do you know what it means to be lost? You separated from God? You know deep in your heart you've been convicted that sin, that disobedience, rebellion, selfishness against God leads to death? Do you believe that? I'm saying physical death plus spiritual death. And the only salvation and hope for you today and tomorrow and forever to go to heaven is this one dying, risen Lord Jesus. Have you repented? That's what the Je Jesus' first message of ministry. Repent and believe the gospel. Turn. He's saying turn. Change your direction. I'm telling you, friends, with all the love I can on this great resurrection day, if you are continually going down your own path, Are you listening? If you are continuing down your own self-centered path that's called the path of sin, that calls, it's called the path that leads to death, and you're separated from God. Jesus says, turn and believe the gospel. Confess Him as your Lord and Savior. Ask for His forgiveness and that you are willing to turn your life over to Jesus and change by the power of God. Can you do it? He can do it in you. And I ask the Holy Spirit to move in your heart even now. Unchurch one can be an individual, be a couple, a family. You've waited so long So long to come into the body of Christ. Skyline Heights Church family. What's wrong? Wouldn't this be a great glorious resurrection day that you'd come into His church family? If you are a believer in Christ and love Him, maybe you've been baptized. If you haven't, you need to be through believer's baptism. 
and follow Jesus. You need to come into his church family. Christian? I know there are many of you here today. How is your relationship to the Lord? Now, you're going to think seriously about this, whether you want to or not. I'm talking to Christians now. I'm not talking to unsaved, lost, undone, wherever they're at, unchurched peoples. I'm saying Christian church member, faithful ones. Before you lie down tonight and put your head on the pillow, you need to ask this question. What is my relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ as represented on this glorious resurrection day? How is it? How am I walking with Jesus? I'm not saying anything about being lost. Just get me right here. We're not talking about that. We're just talking how are you living for Jesus? Now you think about it. Be faithful. This tagging along, this here touchy, touchy stuff, you know, people have what you call touchy religion. I don't want to be around them. Honestly. You, you say something, they say, oh, preacher's against me. What is that? You better go, get to the Word of God. You better ask yourself that question about relationship to Jesus. Get away from touchiness, get to faithfulness. And serve the Lord. This resurrection day, wake up. Wake up. And begin to become alive in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together. God's in moving. I, I don't, please don't leave unless you absolutely have to. You're sickly. Please. Unless something is wrong, don't leave. God is moving. You begin praying. Some of you just need to bow your heads in prayer. Right now.